Hello, Professor McEwen here. What we're going to look at is this essay that is analyzed how Dr. Martin Luther King's philosophy of nonviolent protest brought success to the civil rights struggle from 1955 to 1965. Now, understand, this is a time period, so you have to start at 1955 and you end at 1965. So this is going to require for you to have to read possibly two chapters and also look at two video lectures that are going to cover this entire time frame. So therefore, this is going to require you to write three, three paragraphs to properly answer this question. Now let's look at how you could break this up. So first what you need to do is address what is the theory of nonviolent Protest. Now, this would not count as part of the three paragraphs that you're required to write for this essay. But it's important for the reader to understand who were Dr. King's influences and why he believed that the philosophy of nonviolent protest will be successful. Now, after this, stay in chronological order as events happen. Don't jump around because that makes for a very poor S.A. Remember, this is history, and history is a story, and you need to stay in order of the story. So where to begin? Well, in 1955, it will be with the Montgomery bus boycott. This is started by Rosa Parks refusing to give her seat on a bus to a white customer, and therefore this is what introduces Dr. King on the national scene. He brings with him his formation of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. You have to explain what was uh, that organization about and what were they setting out to do. What is also important is the success of using nonviolent protest in the Montgomery bus boycott and it also helped in the Supreme Court case of Browder v. Gale being passed to this law of discrimination when it came to desegregating buses. And then you may want to include the Civil Rights Act of 1957. Now understand all acts of Congress are capitalized, so make sure you do that. Now, this will be your second paragraph where you start to talk about his influence beginning to expand in the years of 1958 to 1963. Things you could touch on are the sit-ins, beginning with the Greensboro Four, the four brave college students in Greensboro, North Carolina, that refused to leave the lunch counter until they were served a meal because due to Jim Crow laws, they were not allowed to eat at the lunch counter at a Woolworths. This is part of an offshoot called the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee which is going to be created, and they're going to do similar settings, which you would uh, discuss. You may also include the Congress of Racial Equality's Freedom Riders to challenge uh, the court cases and also the new federal law of desegregating bus lines in the South. What's very important and you need to include is the famous March on Washington. This is right after a letter of from Birmingham jail, in which now John F. Kennedy, the President of the United States, is going to push for a Civil Rights Act through Congress. Finally, you're going to enter with the success. This will cover the year 64, 1965. You write about the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, what was in it, because this is the accumulation of all the efforts that Dr. King made. And then you'd write about the March on Selma. What was the purpose? What did Dr. King hope to bring to attention to the American people? Because this is going to lead immediately to the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and include what is in it. And then this is where you finally come to a conclusion of how his efforts led to the success of the Civil Rights Movement.